Hey guys, welcome to my makeup masterclass. I know it's been a long time coming. This is my very, very first masterclass. I feel like I have mastered a few things that I just wanna share with you guys about my style of makeup, which is a very soft and pretty glam. Great for TV, great for photo shoots, great for red carpets more on the natural side, but still full, full glam. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope some of your questions are answered. I'm spilling the tea on all the products I use, all my techniques, my brushes. I am just giving you all the answers. So, so a little bit about me and my journey during makeup. I have been doing makeup for almost 10 years. I started when I was about 18 years old. When I was in college, I was technically homeless independent student. Um, I was doing $8 faces in Taylor and Andrew's basement. It was $8. Um, it was for brows, foundation, and lip. That's it, that's all that came with it. People mainly gave me $10. I would have about eight clients a night. I would go down to the basement and I would use that as my studio, or I would use my dorm as my studio when the basement was full. And I would make about $300 every weekend. Like, I was running it up. I was the richest homeless kid on campus. I was richer than the kids who had parents. I'm not gonna lie to y'all had a lot of money um, and I just used that money and I would buy like the $5 Maybelline foundations and like the lipstick from uh, Maybelline and L'Oreal and remember LA Girl liner I would buy that and I would buy those cheap red cherry lashes and I like always would like buy bulk stuff I would just try to find like bulk stuff I've always reinvested in myself and then I think I might have moved up to $50. And then when I opened my first store, I opened my first salon and boutique at 21. And I think I was charging about $75 a face. But even now, it's still a huge difference from charging 200 to 75. But it's really because I know my worth and I'm somewhere that allows me to, they pay me, how about that? They, they, they pay me, <laughs> okay? Like they're giving me what I'm worth. And, I don't have to worry about the rah-rah and the back and forth. So you really have to know your clientele and just do what's best for you. I think LA was best for me, but it's not gonna be best for everyone. I think if you are like on the heavier side of makeup or more dramatic, like LA's not really that kind of place, but if you wanna learn like more toned down, like celebrity style looks, then this is somewhere that you should go. It's not really a heavy makeup place, I I'll say that. I was a tomboy, so I had no like reason to be into makeup. I actually just seen a friend this weekend who used to do my makeup. I never did my own makeup, but once I got like my senior year of high school, I was on my own. I was coming to school. My teacher was bringing me to school at five o'clock in the morning. So I just started to do my makeup in the bathroom because I was there early and I was going through a lot and I just didn't know, want people to know what I was going through and I always feel like look better, feel better. So that's how this came about. And then that's when Paris came about, uh, my second personality. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the glam. This is Lake Cream Concentrate. I always start my makeup off with a moisturizer. It's so important that your client's skin is very hydrated, no matter if they have oily skin, dry skin, you always want to hydrate their skin. I'm using a Real Techniques brush that is really just painting it into the skin and I'm moving the skin, um, the, for the forehead upward, the, the under eye and cheeks backwards, the chin wherever, and then the nose. But I'm just really working this moisturizer in before I go in with my primer. And um, yeah, pretty basic moisturizer. Just make sure you use it. So this is my MAC strobe cream. And what this is gonna do is really illuminate the skin and highlight and hydrate everything again. Um, this, I purposely used a client's skin who wasn't perfect. Most people for their makeup class use the most beautiful skin, the most untextured skin. My client has really textured skin. It's really dry. Her eyebrows are really dry. So I'm just making sure to bring some highlight to her skin because it was really dull and dry. So strobe cream helps me with that a lot. It just helps the foundation to naturally glow. So right here, I'm just trying to figure out which foundation to use. And I decided to mix 
Um, she does like the tanner look, but I also still stuck very close to her foundation color. And right here, you can just see me testing out the two colors and deciding which one to use. And like I, I did end up mixing them. So now I'm just painting it on her face with that same brush that I used for my makeup. So now I'm taking my brush from Real Techniques, and this is my favorite foundation brush. Um, it's like a stippling foundation brush, but it's also still like a buffing brush. So I'm just pushing that into the skin. It's so important not to drag it down. And, and just like, I see people just moving the products all away. Literally just buff this into the skin and make sure you're staying in place when you're buffing it, but also move it. Do not slide this across the face because it can really just give you a very nasty look and not a solid foundation. This is so important. And also watch as I do avoid her under eyes so that when I do concealer, it does increase because you don't want a lot of product. Why is she looking at me like that? <laughs> So this looks really good. It looks like her skin, it looks hydrated. It looks really, really, really good um, as a layer of foundation. And then we're gonna go in with concealer and brighten her up. So this is a concealer I am using, um, what's that, Graftobian. Yes, Graftobia. So what, what was happening with my big warm palette, which is the one I usually use, is there's a row in there that I use so often. So I decided to start to just buy the row and I will give the name of that product to my photographer because I'm blanking right now. But I wanna say that it's warm number two and I'm just going in and I'm highlighting beside the nose, down the nose the forehead, lifting the eyes and the chin. And the chin, you always wanna go in with a little bit of product, not too much, because you don't want your face to look wider down here. You want it to look slim. And I think we all been getting carried away with the chin. I knew drinking my wine, these little net nets would be coming. So now I'm just pushing this product into my client's skin with the Beauty Blender. And you know what? She shouldn't have came with no eyelash extensions, but she did. So I'm really showing y'all how to do it on a client that's not your typical model client, but just a client that you just want to make look beautiful. Any type of skin, any type of lash, any type of brow. Her brows aren't groomed. Her lashes aren't done. Well, they are done, but I wish they weren't. <laughs> you know, like this is not your typical client, but it's still going to look flawless. And I don't put any product on my beauty blender. Um, I just rinse it, squeeze it all the way out till it's almost dry. It's really like a microfiber beauty blender. And I just bounce that product right in very softly. I don't go in with a heavy hand at all. So this is my cream blush from Sienna. I wanna say this is the number two, but don't quote me on that. Um, and I'm just taking the color from there and putting it on her cheeks. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bounce that out with my Beauty Blender as well. And notice I'm putting it in more areas than just the cheek because I kinda just wanna spread this brightness everywhere. And I'm just buffing that with the bottom of the Beauty Blender in an angle that will be right above her contour, but right below her highlight. It's like ice cream, Napoleon. Is it called Napoleon ice cream? So this is the palette that I was talking about and you can see that missing row. So what I used earlier for her concealer is just basically a bigger size of that missing row because I used that row so much. Now I'm going in with bronzer from that warm palette and I'm just warming up her face. And as you can see, this client skin is very textured, but the makeup still is going to look flawless. Okay, so now I'm going down the bridge of her nose so I can just slim it down a little bit. Yes, we just getting her together. So 
So I'm taking a, I don't know what kind of brush this is. I, sometimes I use it for powder. Sometimes I use it to blend out contour. It's like a fluffy, I don't know. I don't really know brush types for real, y'all. But it's a, it's a nice brush. It's like a circular setting brush. It's kind of like a setting brush. Actually, it's, it's just like this brush that I use for my under eye powder, but it's a little bit more stiff. It's from Morphe. And I will get the numbers of these brushes and let y'all know so y'all can know the exact brushes that I'm using. This looks so good. And notice that the brush, the tip of the brush is pointing upward because I want to blend that up and not down. You always want your brush to point where you're blending and I'm just moving up and down. I'm not just blend, I'm moving it up and down so that it can move in the proper way. And I'm keeping that brush head upward at all times. Now I'm just going back in with a little bit more concealer because I want her to be bright, bright. I want to give her that really, really bright look. And I did not need that much, but it's okay. <laughs> I really didn't need that much. Once you watch in the back, you'd be like, Jesus Christ. They gonna be like, you big sipping. <laughs> Come and be gone. It's been five minutes. <laughs> so now I'm just taking a fluffy brush and just blending that out. Depending on the shape of someone, someone's nose, you really want to watch what kind of brush you use. Because she has quite a, quite a lot of space for me to use a fluffy brush, it was okay. But if it was a smaller nose or a nose like mine, you, make, you wanna make sure you use a more concentrated nose. Her nose comes out more, so a fluffy brush was okay for this. But you definitely wanna make sure you use something less flexible with the nose area. And I use this brush for the whole nose, the bridge, everything. So now I'm going in and blending out this brighter concealer. And it looks good, y'all. I be doing my thing. <laughs> I'm Robin <Seale. laughs> I'm hollering. It look good. It does. So here, this is really, you know what, this is so important to my routine. I take my banana powder and my RCMA and I mix it together with the end of a brush. And I always, well, I don't always, but now to make my makeup look softer and more flawless, I use a powder puff, a really thick powder puff. And I just take that powder puff and I dot it on the napkin. And then I tap the excess off and that napkin really keeps you from just piling up the powder. Cause sometimes when we put powder on, we just put it on so heavily. You see how one side went on light and one side went on heavy. I did not bounce that enough on that napkin, but it's still gonna be flawless because with the powder, it just doesn't go on so directly as it would if you put it on with the triangle or a beauty blender or any of that. But yeah, this gonna look good. This gonna look good. Powder puffs are the way when it comes to setting powder. And the reason that I mix, I use that yellow and that white is because she's of a lighter complexion, but I still wanted to warm her skin up a little bit. This is my gloss and clearly she thought her lips was dry, so we just gonna bounce that on there. <laughs> This is the Brow Wiz in dark brown. So I'm just taking uh, the spoolie at the end and I'm brushing her brows upward um, and just in the direction that I want them to go. Notice her brows are not groomed. 
this will be majority of your clients. Their brows will not be groomed. If you're an esthetician, esthetician, or however you say that, you can go ahead and groom their brows, but I am not, so I just do not bother. I always work with what I have. So we're gonna do a thicker brow because she has hair everywhere, you know? But it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be cute. So I'm taking it and I'm putting some hair-like strokes in the beginning. So the method to my madness when it comes to brows is really just to follow the natural shape. Um, even if you do a bad job, I feel like this is the most important part and that's carving it. I'm taking a flat brush um, and carving out her brows. This part really depends on the eye structure. I don't take a flat brush with every eye, but the way that her eye is made, I think that it was important for me to use one. And also because she has a lot of extra hair, so I wanted to make sure I concealed that hair a lot. Sometimes I will use a concealer brush, but it just was not necessary with her eye shape. I thought that a straighter brush would be more perfect. Now I'm going back in and fixing all of those strokes, um, all of those places where I went too far with the concealer, and then I'm gonna do the top brow. Sometimes I do wait until I do the under eye of the other one to do the top, but I got real cocky with it, and I just went ahead and did it. But the most important thing, thing with brows is just to start at the bottom, connect to the top, go to the top, connect to the top, and then just bring it all down. Like that's the most important. You always wanna blend in the top and the bottom after you do the concealer. I see people letting it sit there. That makes me cringe. Bring the concealer down and use it with, I, yeah. See, I'm not setting my top until I do the top brow. So I don't set the top of my forehead until I blend, blend out the concealer from the top brow. So I'm just gonna repeat the same thing here. I'm just moving my brush right along. And I'm pulling that down. I'm really giving y'all any, I have my real hair out this day. So now I'm going in with bronzer, very softly. I'm taking an angled um, brush, an angled fluffy brush, and I'm just dusting off where I put the contour very lightly, going up and down her cheek to create a contour, pulling it down, just making it look very pretty. This is the most interesting part of the makeup look because if you're not confident with all the setting powder and messiness on the face, you will not make it through the look. But it's just so important that you go and touch up everything that you use cream on with a powder so that it can blend, so that it can stay and just look really soft and even. So important. So now I'm going in with the blush. She's, she's blushing. <laughs> I'm going in with the blush and I'm just setting that. Uh, so now I'm just going in and I'm looking and I observe that I need to add more brow. So I'm just going in and adding a little bit more brow. And sometimes I just do that. It's all about just eyeing it. I don't know what she laughing at. Okay, so now I'm going in with my P. Louise. 
eyeshadow base and I'm about to start the eyeshadow. Right now, I'm just taking my first color on a fluffy brush and putting that all over the brow bone. I'm coming down a little bit further than the concealer, so that could be my highlight color and just bringing this light, soft, pink, nudie tone right up under the brow bone and carving out the eye, okay? And I'm doing the same thing to the other side. So now I'm just making sure to take that color into the inner brow bone and just make sure that it comes into her nose so that it looks pretty. Now I'm taking my second color and just popping that right on top of that color a little bit further below to create some depth. You know, we love depth. <laughs> and this is a, I think it's a Morphe M453, but I be making stuff up, so don't quote me. <laughs> I really do be making stuff up. Uh, I'm gonna tell y'all what brushes I use, I swear. Hands is dirty, child. So joint hands is a little bit darker than the one I used before. And I'm putting that into the crease and just blending that around and creating even more depth. And I'm blending that into the color above. Oh, this looks so good. So now I'm taking one more dark color and I'm just putting that on. So now I'm taking joint hands and fuzz something or whatever that was called and I'm mixing them together and creating a little bit more depth right below the crease and mixing that into the crease color. And I'm just doing the same thing to the other side. And in reality, this process takes me about 30 minutes. For this video, it might have took about 50 just because we were stopping and moving to the other side. So now I'm just taking a fluffy brush and mixing all those colors together because I did see a little bit of imperfections. Then I'm taking my flat brush and taking this gold color and I'm just really just swiping that like that beauty supply eyeshadow swipe we used to do, just swiping that across the eye. Real pretty. I think the trick to making shimmers look so bold is really to just swipe it, like not really push it. Pushing the colors makes a big mess. You got all that fallout, but to just use your product and swipe it across, use all of it. Use all that you have and swipe all of that so you don't got stuff just falling out everywhere. And I think that really has changed the game for my shimmers, It's just swiping it. I think we so afraid and we think we gotta pack everything in. Don't pack in shimmers, swipe it. Swiper, we swipe it. So at the end, I am packing uh, just to, oh, I'm packing in a darker color uh, just to give it a little bit, a little bit more depth at the end. I didn't want to feel the lid with that color. I want it to be more of a, I don't know what kind of look it's called, but a look. I'm holding down her lashes and using my 
L'Oreal, I want to say L'Oreal uh, black wig liner. I love this liner. I have not found a liner that I like the brush, but this one. I, I, I used MAC on myself today, but I don't like the the pencil. That's why I have these inner corners. I just, I just go too far with it. So I'm using my concealer brush, the same one that I used under the brows and just carving out any imperfections with the liner. I might have went a little bit too far. So I'm just cleaning that up and I always take my MAC press powder. It came up, I said it before it even came up and I, and I clean that up and fix that. So for this, I'm taking my, this is my favorite brush in the world. Uh, keep it on me, keep it on me. It's a contour brush from Real Techniques, but I use it to highlight and contour. If, if you ever wonder what products I keep in my purse, it's my MAC, my MAC Studio Fix Plus that I'm using here in this concealer. So what I use is I take this to set my powder and clean it up. But anytime like I'm outside in the club and I get oily, I just dip this in here and I clean this up and it just looks flawless airbrushed, okay? Okay, so I'm taking my Inglot 77, the OG. Before I put that, I put that on my brush, you know it's kind of movey, so I let it get a little bit, harden a little bit. I'm taking this color and putting it under her eye to give the under eye some depth and just smoke out that black because I'm about to put black in there. Um, sometimes I put the black first, but for this particular look, I want to take the black and put it second. I'm just letting it dry down a little bit. And then I'm taking this brown on a more structured flat brush. Um, it's a shadow brush. And I'm putting it right under there. It's like a darker brown. And then I'm gonna pop that black up in her line. I look good. And notice we still have that powder all over her face. I still have not cleaned that up. And I'm just taking the egg light off the back of my hands. Now that it's got a little bit harder and just putting it in her eyes so that it's not gonna be real runny just in case her eyes do water. It is waterproof, but you still just don't wanna make a mess with it. So now I'm just taking a spoolie and getting those god dang lash extensions together. The big old lash extensions the girls be wearing. Now I am adding mascara to the bottom lash. This is this is one thing that I feel like I personally as a makeup artist have not mastered is bottom mascara. I see a lot of people actually use the mascara wand. Um, of course I don't do that because it's unsanitary, but I need some tips on the bottom lash line, making it look more full and dramatic. So here I'm taking just a beauty supply pencil. And why does she look like that? I'm taking a beauty supply pencil and I'm just lining her lips. <laughs> I don't know why she's looking so serious. I told my cousin don't be playing so much and I think she just was concentrating too hard on not playing. So now I'm taking a darker pencil. Um, I decided that I, I did want to do darker um, and I'm just adding that on top. Sometimes I change my mind. And now I'm taking that Sienna blush palette that you guys seen me use earlier. I do like to use that for lips as well for a matte lip color or just the base. So basically right here is looking like an ombre lip. It looks so pretty. And then I just add my gloss on top of that after I blend all of this together. This helps me move my liner around and just make my look look really pretty and pouty. So I'm using my own gloss. This is House, I think this is the color Miami. Uh, yes, this is the color Miami. And then this is a Morphe uh, shimmer gloss that I'm just adding right on top of that. I do like to mix my glosses. This is it without gloss, that's with gloss on top. So now I'm taking the product I was talking about earlier, 
my contour brush and my setting powder and I'm just taking this product off. You always want to press the powder in. I see people just like swiping it off with no product. It's so important to me to use a color to take it off. So this is NC42. Same color that I used on her but mixed with C4 or C5. And you just hit your brush in this and just start to push the product in. So this is my clear mascara from Maybelline. It's about $4. Um, I use this as brow gel to just secure my brows and brush the hairs where I want them to be. And right now I'm just adding highlight to the cheeks. I do have my clients smile so that I can press it into the, the top of their cheek. <laughs> um, and then I highlight the forehead just a little bit in the chin area. And now I'm covering her eyes to spray her face and set everything. You know, I used to wonder why I had these little wet bubbles on my eyeshadow. It's because when you spray the face, you have to cover the eyes. And then I'm going back in with that same powder and I'm just pressing it in and it gives me my final flawless look. And I'm taking my photos for the gram and everything is looking so good. Y'all can see on my phone, it looks flawless. It looks so skin-like. What do you use to book your appointments? So to book my appointments, I use an app called Style Seat. Um, what I really like about Style Seat is it organizes my calendar. Um, I don't have to be a part of the process of my clients booking me. It has a set list of my prices. I can turn on the times I'm available and off. I can even adjust it the week of or the month of. I can offer different packages. It shows me my earnings for the month. It shows me my daily earnings, weekly earnings, the refunds. It just shows me everything. It also helps me book appointments because it puts us in a directory across the entire Style Seat platform so people in Los Angeles can easily access me. How do you market on Instagram? So the different ways that I market on Instagram is mainly through hashtags. So when I lived in Chicago, I would hashtag Chicago makeup artists. I would hashtag Chicago MUA, Chicago hair, Chicago hairstylist, because people who are looking for hair might also need their makeup done. If they're getting their hair done for their birthday, they might consider, oh, this makeup looks good. Let me also book a makeup artist. Um, same thing with Los Angeles. Now that I live in LA, it's hashtag LA MUA, hashtag LA makeup, hashtag Los Angeles makeup because you could do shy in Chicago, you could do LA, you could do Los Angeles, because some people do shorten it. I, typically, my clients do tell me, because I do ask at the appointment, that they looked under LA MUA. So that's the main hashtag that I use with a variety of other ones that uh, range from just makeup artists, simple, when I just want people to like my photos, um, LA photographer, LA hairstylist, things like that, to just bring my clientele to me. I also run ads. I have not run any ads this month. I'm trying to see like how many clients I get without running ads. And I still kept about the same schedule without running ads, but ads do help, especially when I had just got to LA. So I just started back doing makeup about six months ago. So to get myself started, I did run ads and I run my ads just to the range of about 15 to 20 miles out so that people can travel to me and that I'm only marketing to people in the Los Angeles area and they can easily access me and the, the people are already looking for me. I'm in their area. I see a lot of ads from people, from makeup artists in um, Atlanta and I just don't understand why someone in Atlanta is marketing to somebody in Los Angeles. It doesn't make sense to me and it's a waste of money. Even if you're a traveling makeup artist, it just does not make sense. What kind of policies do you set for your clientele and why? Okay, I think it's very, very important that you set rules and policies for your clients so that people can understand the difference between business and personal. Um, a lot of clients might follow me on social media, so they might not understand that I am still a businesswoman and there is a line not to cross. So I uphold my clients to a certain standard and I, and I serve my clients with that, cert that same standard. I only allow my clients to be up to 10 to 15 minutes late and there is a late fee. I am understanding if someone calls in advance and I do have the time to wait, I may wait, but only if someone calls, if someone does not call, then I do not give them that and I make sure to charge them the fee so they can understand not to play with my time. Um, cancellation fees, that's another reason why I use Style C. So if someone is to cancel the same day, they are charged half. If someone is to no, no, um, 
no call, no show. They are charged the entire fee. Style seat requires you to put your card on file, so I don't have to worry about clients running off. Now, there are those clients who will get away with it, but mainly I can still charge a client when um, they don't show, and that does give myself a reputation that I'm not to be played with, quote unquote, but just like that to remain professional and to come to an appointment if you book an appointment. I also would love to keep like the talking and stuff to a minimum, but I am very personable. But I do feel like if you are too friendly with your clients, you almost don't get the job done. You will be doing makeup for an hour and 30 minutes instead of 30 minutes because you're just having too much fun with them. If I have time, I will have fun, but sometimes I have to shut it down. Like, give me a second um, if you could look down, if you could um, stop moving your lips. Like, sometimes I just have to be stern because some people just don't stop talking. Setting where I'm dealing with a difficult client, I will either cancel their appointment or just excuse them and let them know that I will no longer work with them. You do have that right when you work for yourself to tell a client that you are just not gonna do their makeup when they're just creating a hostile environment. I typically can tell those clients during the booking process, they are very much more difficult. They ask a lot of weird questions, personal questions, and then and there, I just dead the situation and let them know that I'm not available and whatever they're looking at, I make sure that it goes to unavailable. And then when they stop looking at it, I put it back up. That's just how I protect myself from dealing with clients that I don't want to deal with. And then you got your great clients that you can keep on bringing back and back and back. I do give some of my clients my regulars package deals, but I typically don't. How do you pick your price? My price is based off of Los Angeles, my expertise and my the quality of my work. I am a very good makeup artist <laughs> if you ask me i'm one of the best um but in my lane in los angeles we really go for the soft look because we invest in a lot of skincare people invest in their bodies and their looks and their images they're on camera a lot the heavier makeup that people do in other cities are they're they're generally not going to be taking images in front of red carpet so the makeup i do looks good under lighting like all types of lighting tv lighting hd tv cameras red carpets everything so my glam is worth a bit more and my clientele is of a higher standard, which is how I how I keep my clientele of a higher standard is charging more. I charge about 180 at the minimum to 250 a face plus other fees. Um, that might be high for certain cities, but for Los Angeles, I think it's pretty average, actually below average. Most people charge about 250 and up, but since I am new here, I am charging what I feel like is a standard price for me, and I and I. I do well with it. How much do you spend on your kit? So I spend about $1,200 on my kit monthly. Um, that's just what I choose to spend. So that's about $300 a week. That's about one to two appointments a week. And I average about 26 appointments in a week, or I could it could be less. I could have a 10 week appointment, but that's still $2,000 and upwards. So I'm not taking a lot of money out of that. That's a little bit more than 10%, about 15% of my, my clientele is going back into investing. And you should definitely reinvest into your kit. I buy new products, but I mainly stick to the same ones, the ones that I feel are important, the ones that I talked about in today's video. Um, those are the products that are important to me and that I've always used. I'm not big on trying new products that come out because I just am not, but I might start if they start sending to me for free. I really just stick to my pro stuff because you get a pro discount. Um, I am a professional in a Los Angeles. You don't have to be licensed, which I am not. Um, as long as you can show that you have clientele, a website, you can technically get like 40% off most makeup, which I take advantage of. And yeah, like now I'm here doing my best. I am looking to get into TV and film, and I know that my dreams are soon to come true. I hope you guys enjoyed this masterclass, and if you guys have any more questions, feel free to email me at hiltonhustle at gmail.com or to comment questions on my Instagram under my masterclass post or any post or DM me. I probably will respond if you pay for the class. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that you learned something. And if you didn't learn something, please let me know what you need to learn so that I can be more, I can be more of a teacher. <laughs>
Thank you guys for watching. I'm out.